All right. So I'm Anne Marie Slaughter. Uh, I am the president and CEO of New America. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome to our new space. And um, we hope you'll come back often. Uh, it is, uh, we're in for a really fascinating afternoon. Uh, and I will start uh, by saying just how pathbreaking I think this work is on digital globalization and more gen generally. Uh, on looking at the world through the lens of connectedness. Now, I will, full disclosure, it's easier to say it's path-breaking work when they're breaking the same path I'm on. Uh, and indeed, <laughs> uh, in, in 2009, I wrote an article uh, about um, how America was uh, much more powerful in this century than most people thought because it was the most connected nation in a networked world. And that if you think about a world that is horizontal and networked, and that's old news in the business literature and many other literatures, if, you, if that's the way you see the world, then the measure of power is connectedness. Now, this was slightly a lonely view, and I was out actually at PIMCO uh, giving an hour-long presentation uh, talking about the chessboard view of the world and the, and the uh, web view of the world and how we really had to see the world in terms of the web and getting beaten up. And just before I went out there, uh, there came McKinsey's first report. This is the second uh, 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 building on that, uh, on the connectedness index uh, and how to see the world in terms of networks and flows. And I have been grateful to them ever since, uh, but I also think that they're the, they are really pioneering in quantifying and measuring something we all say at the start of every talk. You know, we are more connected than ever, we're more interdependent than ever. They are really trying to break down what that means, and as I said, to measure it, to quantify it, uh, and they look at con uh, the flows, the networks and flows of goods and services, uh, of uh, finance, uh, of people, uh, and of data. I, when I look at the world, instead of, of uh, breaking it out in terms of finance and services, you can also look at flows of energy uh, and increasingly flows of climate, right, in the sense of what, what, what is, how is climate altering the flows, not just of migrants, that's people, but thinking about desertification, thinking about water shortages, all of that, that's, it's a very useful perspective there as well, what region is connected to what, depending on where the river source is or, or uh, where, how, the, how they are affected by global climate. Uh, so th I want to just start by, by uh, admiring the, the way uh, that I think increasingly all of us will have to think about the world. The second thing these reports do uh, is to really highlight uh, the ways in which the dig dig digitalization of the economy uh, empowers small and medium enterprise and empowers small countries. And again, as a foreign policy person, you know, Costa Rica, Singapore, Finland, many small countries can be far more powerful in the world than the traditional way of measuring power. Uh, and the, uh, this re one of these reports looks at that, that if you're a, if you're a country that effectively makes yourself a platform uh, for digital data flows, you have a kind of power, you may, be a, you may have a kind of vulnerability also, and I'll come to that in a moment, but you have a kind of power that traditional measures of power simply cannot capture. You know, if Singapore is small, small people, small economy relative, uh, uh, relatively, uh, but it can be much more powerful than we might think. And in the U.S. analog is smaller cities, right? That similarly, you could be in Chattanooga or Charleston or Austin and have much more weight in the digital economy than you might have had in the industrial economy. Uh, and there, uh, you know, if you read the cover of the Atlantic, uh, this month's Atlantic, Jim Fallows talking about American cities renewing themselves, uh, something that we, we're looking at at New America as well. Now, I would not be true to my new American colleagues if I didn't close uh, by being, uh, by adding a cautionary note. Uh, and indeed, someone at lunch said, you know, these reports are, are very positive and connectedness is good. 
It is in many, many ways, but I will just offer a couple of the ways in which uh, many of my colleagues here have questioned this completely digital economy. Uh, the, the possibility for price discrimination, uh, individualized price discrimination, much, much higher when we know everything that we know about you and you can, you know, t you, you uh, log in from a particular zip code and you can get differential pricing. Just one example of how a monopoly can be abused. Uh, the, uh, the way we think about um, what war means, and we're, you know, we're also, war is now among us. It's not just terrorism, it's actually, you know, people who are fighting a war, but fighting it from wherever they, they are. This kind of digital connectedness uh, means that the cyber part of that war uh, is also um, much more alarming in many ways. It will completely transform education. Uh, and in ways that many of us think are great from a learning point of view, maybe less great from my former uh, occupation as a professor, uh, and thinking about U.S. higher education and the advantages in higher education, this levels that playing field, but also it will severely change uh, existing higher education institutions, which have very high fixed costs. Um, and uh, also human rights and thinking about human rights uh, in a digital economy, in a digital world, our human rights are increasingly digital rights. And Rebecca McKinnon, who's here, uh, has an index called Ranking Digital Rights. But increasingly those rights of privacy, of security, but also of discrimination. Uh, again, one of the things about being that digitally connected, you cannot escape your creditors, the government, uh, the various other uh, large institutional entities uh, that can lock you into a particular status. So one of our fellows is writing a book on the digital poorhouse and how you ca it's much harder to escape a particular status. You can't just move. You can't start over. You are tracked, and everything that you do uh, is tracked. So I just wanted to, to uh, highlight some of the, uh, the downsides uh, of being ever more uh, connected. Uh, but with that, let me just tell you what we're going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, we're going to start with uh, James Manika, the head of McKinsey Global Institute, who's going to talk a little bit about the actual papers. Uh, and then uh, his co-authors on this report, uh, Susan Lund and Sri Ramaswani, will give TED Talks. Uh, we'll then move to two panels, so we're giving you a little of everything this afternoon uh, and have panel discussions. Uh, and then finally, we will close with a keynote uh, from Jason Furman. So I will now turn it over to James uh, and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much.